So let's get started. Uh, I have chosen some exercises, uh, like just some CTF challenges. They are available on my Keyways public uh, folder, but they should also be inside your VM already under exercises. And you should have all the binaries there, just if I change something or updating something, maybe, I don't know. You also have the link for Anger in GitHub, where you can also find all the documentation for the tool. And they also have a lot of challenges that they keep in a repository just for people to try and learn to use Anger. Other useful tools that I'm going to be using a lot when solving this challenge is LLDB. If you are more a GDB person, you can also install GDB and uh, then I normally say to people to also install Git because I cannot look at that output. If you also use LLDB, uh, I like to use LLDB in, inside Python and for that, I have like this small command handler for LDB that it's very useful when I am just like debugging or solving challenges. And if you just keep using the Python, um, the Jupyter notebooks, you can just like uh, run the cell and it should work. You can also, if you prefer, install IPython or just write Python scripts. It's up to you. I like to use Python notebooks because I like to see the output of the tools and have a kind of a write-up when I'm solving challenges. I think it's very practical, but it's definitely not the, the thing for everybody. Uh, as always, I, I already have here a small a uh, skeleton with how to if you want to try it by yourself before listening how I do it you are welcome to do it so just press pause if you are coming back to the recording right now or if you just kept looking into it to, to, to see the walkthrough uh, we are first going to execute the command file you would do it normally in a command line. You can also do, uh, you can execute binaries from the, that you would use, that you would do in the terminal, just using a exclamation point inside the Jupyter notebook. So what I'm doing here is like, I just do file. You can do whatever you prefer. You can use your preferred tooling for it. Uh, I, I like to see which kind of binary I'm using or I'm looking into. In this case, we have our elf binary that it's 32 bit and it's not stripped and dynamic linked. So what I do, I just look at strings. That's the very, very lazy approach of reversing engineering. And what we see here, uh, for example, is the name of the challenge that's the Yoli crack me level two and we have two interesting strings the password okay and the invalid password everybody that uh, plays a bit of ctf or just like a bit of reverse engineering know what you are looking at right now we are we keep like just scrolling and we see a lot of um g glibc uh, functions. So let's uh, debug it. As I said uh, before, I use LLDB inside Python, so I have I can debug it directly from the uh, Jupyter notebook. For that, I need the path for my binary. As I said to you, it's inside the exercise folder of the virtual machine. Uh, the architecture, as we uh, checked before with file is a 32-bit binary so we need to use the i386 and then we set our debugger we create an instance of a debugger and we create a, a target that it's our binary
Uh, you can use, again, your preferred tooling. You can do a GDP if you prefer. All we are doing here right now is just disassemble uh, the main function. So as we disassemble the main function, we can see that there are a call for print, there is another call for printf, and then a call to for scanf, and then another printf call, and then another. So we remember that we saw interesting strings before. What we can do is check which kind of strings we have in these addresses that are being printed afterwards. To do that, uh, we can just put the address in, in my common <laughs> thing for LLDB. So the first one that we are going to, to check is the, this one. So we is called to the function and we just put an address that we want to see what it's in. So this is our first string, like the Yoli crack me level. That's very interesting. So we look at into another one, the next one. It's the six to one in the end. So we go back to our LLDB and we look what is in the six to one address. And that's asking like the password and then we see here a format string for a digit and then password again. What's also kind of weird. But if we take into account that we have an scan F here, we could also check what we have in this address. And it's not that far from the address that we have. It's exactly the string format that we saw before. It belongs to scanf. So, and then we have here a compare and then a printf and a printf for the jump. So let's check what it is in these addresses. So the first one, is also very close to the address we were before. And that's password okay. So if the compare works, we are not jumping to this address here. We are printing that the password is right. So we already know what we want to do. So let's solve it in Yanger now that we understand what the, the binary is doing. We are going to import anger to set up the environment and then we need to create a project. Creating a project is the way that anger uses to um, load a binary into its um, engine and for doing that we need to type anger and then we create a project and then we need the binary. The binary was under exercises and that's the number seven anger and we want the crack me number two and then we can just execute this line the next thing that we need to do is to define the the entry point of the program and then all the paths that it's going to be explored by anger so the first thing that we do is store the entry state that it's like right now before even starting execution. So it's really the main, the entry state is the entry point of the binary. Sometimes we also call it the path because it's the start of the path, but they are just this different number names for the same uh, point on the binary. And as we saw um, before, we, we 
we had at least two uh, possible paths. The one that says the password is okay and the one that it's saying password is invalid. And what we do here is also create a path group that it's just like a symbolic engine, but sometimes we call it simply symbolic engine or symbolic group. It's just like a name. And sometimes we call like this time a path group because it's a group of all the possible paths inside the binary. So let's execute this. There we go. So, and now we need to decide what we are looking for because we have all possible paths of the binary already stored here in the symbolic group. And if you want to run, we, we need to give a direction for like what is Anger looking for. And we can just look for everything that is possible. For example, in this case, we could just tell um, Anger to uh, run until, and then we define a Lambda function. And we say that uh, our path group or the length of our path group is more than one. So we know that we are in, in a branching point. But for this to be true, so we can we define this as a lambda function, which means that the length needs to be the length of the active paths inside the path group needs to be more than one. And then we know that we are in a branching point. So we run and then you can see anger working. And the simulation manager actually found two active paths after this node where it is right now. That's interesting because we know that the, the place where the actual password is in a branch that has two possibilities, the flag is right and the flag is wrong. The password is right, the password is wrong. So we know that uh, we can hope at least that we are in this branch where password is right, password is wrong. To see what it's under this node, we can use the path group and then we call all the actives. We know we have two actives, so we have the active index zero and active index one. And to see what is going to happen in the next line of code after this one, we can use POSIX stamps. So let's see what is there. The input necessary to uh, reach the path number one is the first one and the input necessary to reach the second path would be the second one. We don't know which one is password wrong and password is right. So we can just try both of them. Uh, we can start with the first one, the uh, index number zero. So we store this value in the flag and then we um, use it in the crack me and that was the right password uh, we can just test for the sake of demoing it with the second one and then it's the invalid password so we are really right now in the branching point and the input necessary to land into the password is valid a string would be the first one and then you get the thread. 